Now, the only difference between this section and the previous one, all the ones we did before had one in front of x. Now it could be a two, it could be one third, it could be anything. Now, what does the b do? We know what the a does. The a does what we call vertical stretching, up and down. What does the b do? That's horizontal stretching or compressing. So what does that mean? Normal sine function has a period equals 2 pi. The reason? Because the period is always calculated by going 2 pi divided by b. In the previous section, b was what? 1. So it took 2 pi for it to complete one full cycle. If b is not 1, it might take 3 pi, it might take 4 pi or half a pi to complete one full cycle. So what's the definition of period? It's the distance required to complete one, just one, one full cycle. before it starts to repeat itself. So let's say I gave you this problem. I said, can you graph? There's an example now. Can you graph y equals sine 2x? Okay. The normal sine function, again, the basic sine function looks like this. That's the 2 pi. This is pi. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. This is sine of x, just the sine. My period for that is 2 pi. It goes as high as 1, as low as negative 1. So what is that 2 going to do for me? That 2 is going to change the period for my function. So the period for this function, it's going to be 2 pi divided by b. What is b equal to here? Isn't it a 2? So this function will repeat itself every pi radian. So what does that mean? It repeats itself every pi radian. By the time you go from here to here, you will have one full cycle. So then the graph is going to be squished in. It's like, imagine if this like a sling and you push on it. You're going to compress it. So this is what's going to happen. The graph is going to look like this. Should be symmetric, but I'm crooked here. So by the time, well, I should make it a little bit better because that looks horrible. This is half of that. It should go through the pi over 2. Wait, let me just fix this one. It should look like this. That's one full cycle. It takes one pi to complete. That means pi over two, that's half of it. There's the other half. Then it should go up again, and it comes down here, 
and it goes back there. So if you're looking at two period, you're gonna see two of these cycles, not one, two of them. Because you're only gonna need one pi for it to complete one full cycle. How high is gonna go? What's the amplitude here? It's the absolute value of A. What is the number in front of the sign here? One, the absolute value of one, which is one. So when I graph this, because I'm only gonna be showing you one cycle there, I'm only gonna graph it up to this point. That's all you're gonna see. So I'm gonna practice graphing some of these. Let me try another example. Graph y equals cosine one half x or x over two. It's a cosine function. So what is my amplitude? Let's write what we know. The amplitude is what? The absolute value of the number in front of the cosine, which is a one, and that's a one. And the period, which is how long it takes for it to complete one full cycle or start to repeat itself. That's two pi over B. And what's B here? B is the number in front of X, which is what? A half? What's two pi divided by a half? Well, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by two. That would be four pi. You're dividing by a half. That's the same as multiplying by two. So I'm only gonna graph one cycle. So this is what the graph will look like. It's a cosine function. There is no negative sign, so it starts high. And it goes down, back to that one. But instead of taking two pi to complete one full cycle, how long is it gonna take now? This one says we'll take four pi for it to complete one full cycle. Not two, four. So if this is your zero, that's four pi. This is halfway between them. What's halfway between zero and four pi? Two, two pi. This is halfway between two pi and zero, which is what? Pi. This is halfway between two pi and four pi. Three pi. How high is it gonna go? one down here negative one Let's try this and let's put section one and two together. Y equals three sine pi x. Yes. Yep. Y equals three sine pi x. What is my amplitude? Is what? The absolute value 
of 3, which is what? 3. What is my period? My period is 2 pi divided by b. And what is b? 2 pi, b happens to be the number in front of x, which is what? Pi. And if you simplify that, what's the answer? 2. The pi cancels the pi. Let's graph it. Again, it's a sine function. We know what the sine function looks like. Looks like this. But now that distance here is going to be what? If this is 0, what is that number here? That's a 2. No pi in it. It takes 2 radian, not 2 pi, 2 radian to complete one full cycle. This is half of that, so this is what? 1. This is half of that, 1 half. This is halfway between 1 and 2. Is that 3 halves? How high is it going to go? Three and down here is what? Negative three. So to look at one cycle or one full period, you need to set up your calculator to go from x equals zero to two. And the y value from three to negative three. If you set that up, you will have one full cycle like this on your calculator. Let me try another one. Y equals negative one half cosine X over six. Again, I can rewrite that as negative one-half cosine x over six is really one-six x. That's what x over six. What is my amplitude? It's the absolute value of a. What's a here? negative one-half and the absolute value of negative one-half is one-half. What is the period? Two pi divided by B. B is what? One-six. When you're dividing by 1, 6, that's the same as multiplying by 6 over 1. So that's what? 6 over 1 times 2 pi? That's 12 pi. And now I've got to be just a little bit careful there. Why did I say that? Be careful. Because what's the sign in the front? negative, which means my function is going to be flipped upside down. The cosine function starts high, since it's going to be flipped upside down, it's going to start low. It's going to start from here, and it's going to go up like this, and down here. So this is 12 pi. 
So your catheter should be set up from 0 to 12 pi if you want to see one full cycle. If you set up from 0 to 10, you're not going to see a full cycle. 12 pi is 36. If you do 0 to 10, that's all you're going to see. Just that little portion right there. So if that's 12 pi again, this is half that distance, which is what? 6 pi, this is half of it. 3 pi, this is halfway between 6 and 12. And how high is it going to rise to? That's one half, and down here is what? Negative one half. Because my amplitude is one half. So again, if you're setting up your calculator, you go x minimum zero, x maximum 12 pi. Y min is negative one half, y max is one half, and you'll see one full cycle there. So that's what the A and the B do. The A controls how high up and down the function goes. That's your vertical stretching and compressing. The B controls how squished or how loose that graph. It's called horizontal stretching or horizontal compressing.